one I've done before, but we're going to do it again on the other cam. So this is about preparing a ski to ski after it's been waxed. So we see the ski is all waxed now. Okay. Yeah. She bit the hot box off. But anyway, we wax the ski. So she's all waxed up. Now we got to get her ready to ski. So here we go. This is what it takes. Use a plastic scraper. Plastic scraper. Clean those edges. Okay. This is when I use a plastic scraper. Just to clean those edges down. Get the bulk off the edges. Get it off the sidewalls. All that good stuff. Okay. Removing from sidewalls, removing uh, from edge. At this point, I like to go ahead while the ski's on its side and just take a little off this edge. I'll still take some more off this edge when I put her on down flat. But we'll go ahead and get off at least the high side of that base edge because I'm going to come back. And we'll buff this off right now with a medium fiber pad, gray in color. We don't want any wax on this edge, man. And there's a lot of wax there, still left over. And we are going to not just uh, clean the edge, the steel edge, but we're going to clean the, clean the whole sidewall of the ski right now. And make sure it's really nice. There are no wax balls on there. Okay, so there we go. Medium fiber pad, not applying a lot of pressure, you know, to, to the edge where potentially could dull it. Well, you're not going to dull it much with the medium fiber pad, but nonetheless, not applying uh, pressure, you know, to the, the, the sharp part of the edge. Just, just kind of going over very little pressure actually on the actual edge itself, but getting that wax, getting all that wax cleaned up off of there. Okay. We're going to flip it, and we're going to do the same thing again. Get the wax off that edge. Okay, pretty good there, not too bad. Sometimes if you, you might have a little more wax on one side of the ski than the other. And that's pretty much normal. Okay, once again, going for the high side of that base edge. Get that wax off of there. But when I run that medium fiber pad over, I don't clog her up too much. You know, too bad anyway. Okay. And once again, going to clean that. Want to get it back down on flat again there. Okay, so there we go. Pretty good. Brush off that stuff. We'll grab that medium fiber pad again, that gray one. And I start working that sidewall, working that edge. Don't want any wax on those edges, man. Don't want any wax on that base either. So what this is about is about scraping and brushing. Okay, my old lady's home. She's hollering to me out there. She doesn't know I'm in here making a video. So anyway, she is home. And I'm going to continue here. Okay, so here we go. Now, uh, we're going to start off with the plastic scraper. And we're going to scrape it off those metal edges. We're going to scrape it right on off of there pretty good. Best we can anyway, for sure. We're going to get it all scraped off of those plastic edges. I mean, uh, with the plastic scraper on the metal edges. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's not too bad. There's still, a, you know, you can see the doggone wax, you know, and that little teeny bit we don't worry about. But I like to get the wax off of those base edges so that when I scrape it, I can kind of feel better what I'm doing and I'm just working on the wax on the base and I'm not fighting wax that is on that metal edge right there. So I'm going to start off with this big ass metal scraper right here, this stainless steel. And she'd be really thick. She's nice for the fat skis. Now she's not too sharp, but she true. Scraping wax, you don't need super sharp. 
but I hate them damn plastic scrapers and things are pretty much worthless especially when you start getting into battle skis but anyway I never used a plastic scraper to scrape my wax so see we're getting wax here we're just going to keep on getting wax and we're going to scrape this puppy we're going to take our time we're going to scrape it out of pretty hard wax this is the dominator graphite zoom and uh although it is an all temperature wax with the thermal active ingredient patented by the man himself down there at dominator this wax has been shown to respond to temperature change quite rapidly and has an extremely broad range but be it. anyway it's a hard wax i mean it's it medium hard i mean it's not as hard as the super hard stuff but she's pretty hard so we're gonna scrape here we're going to keep scraping now you see there's wax okay there's wax so we're going to keep scraping here until we get almost no wax okay i realize where i got the camera and where i got my glove okay see there's wax okay there's wax so we're going to keep on scraping now these skis are pretty dang flat but they do have a little bit of rocker side to side tip and tail a little bit of rocker here in other words that ski got a little bit of boat shape and that's good actually we want that in this good old all mountain ski we don't want too rapid engagement we want that little bit of shape there so we need to pay attention to that as we take off the wax we're gonna work that all the way up to that very tip well i like this big fat scraper at first and there's definitely a little art to all this you just keep on scraping. You see, there's still wax. I'm still getting wax. I'm gonna scrape. See, we still get wax. We get wax. Now, anyway, pretty much I'm focusing. Even though this scraper is super fat and super thick, and I mean, it don't flex. I mean, you know, you gotta work to flex this puppy. But still, whether you hold it this way or this way, or tilt it a little bit this way, a little bit this way, okay. You're going to take your time and you'll see by the reflection that you're getting where you got the wax off and where you don't where you here got a little little thicker spot a little clump where the iron stopped a minute we're gonna keep on working at it. see we're getting wax we're still getting wax you know so anyway we got it pretty good now on the flat uh, you really got to work around these, these tips and tails on these rockets too. Because they'll be there in places. You see, you see, where there's still a ton of wax stuck in there. I want to get that all off of there. It's wax in the ski, folks. It ain't wax on the ski. It's wax in the ski. Wax on the ski, especially if you miss the wax or the right wax. If you leave wax on that ski that's a bit soft for the conditions and those crystals dig into that, you're going to slow you down like a bullet and you ain't going to have no glide. So even if your wax may be a scotchy soft for the day or maybe just for the morning hours or a little while, anyway, your ski going to run better when you get it all scraped off the surface. So that's pretty good, okay? So we use a fat one. We use a big one, man. I don't know what hell this thing, what? 13, 14 inches? I don't know, let's take a look. This puppy right here. What the heck is this puppy? See, how, how wide is that puppy? How wide is that puppy? I don't I can't see the doggone screen, but this big, this big scraper right here. So anyway, okay, blah, blah, blah. So, now I'm going to finish it off with the smaller scraper, you know, which is a standard type of scraper that you get from any ski shop. This one here is stainless steel. And uh, it, 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 just like the other one, it's true, it's not too sharp, but it beats the hell out of going back to sharpening plastic. Now, once in a while, you can sharpen this. 
but after you sharpen the one that you're doing your main wax scraping with you're going to go over it with some, see look at that we're still getting wet you're going to go over it with some sandpaper a little bit there kind of smooth that off make sure you're not defanging and pulling too much doggone base material off the ski when you do this okay see we're still getting wax okay so anyway i'm talking a lot i'm not working too too much but i figure you know about what it really does take and these fattest skis you know there's a, there's a lot more work than them fattest skis there's no doubt about that we're coming on down we're doing pretty good now i'm not getting a lot of wax i'm not feeling the grab from the wax anymore getting very little wax okay and that's right on up to the edges so i've come down i scraped it this way and i scraped it a little bit this way a little bit you know just gently and it's really only up in about this portion, this portion here where she's a little rockered. And then back here in the tail, there's only about yay much of that that's a little bit rockered. But I still want to get her, want to get her good and clean. Look at that. See, we're still getting wax. We're still getting wax. So, do not underestimate. Oh yeah, we got a lot up here still. Do not underestimate. Look at that. Still getting a ton of wax up there. The difference of proper scraping and brushing as opposed to uh, barely scraping and, you know, barely brushing, uh, it makes a big difference, folks, okay? But again, wax in the ski, not on the Look at that, see? I'm still getting, I'm still getting wax there, okay? Still getting wax off this puppy. So nose of this ski got a little bit of a pocket to it and it's just the way it's built so i want to make sure i get all that off of there because i don't want even these skis will be running in powder this tip will be working and i want minimal drag minimal drag means no freaking wax on the damn ski wax in the ski okay so a little bit in the middle here still. Look at that. Still getting wax, okay? Okay, if I'm getting wax, I'm not done. Scrape it, folks. Keep scraping. Now, this is not cutting into plastic because the scraper is not that sharp. It's metal, but it's not that sharp. I'll show you one other thing. If you're using a metal scraper, when you come down your edge and you hear a bunch of get it, blah, 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 okay? You're, you're not ruining your ski. Your ski is ruined and you need to deburr that edge. This puppy need to be smooth, okay? Right into the plastic. So I'll show you. I'll take this again, this metal scraper, and we're going to apply a little pressure toward the edge so that we're right there on the P-Tex metal edge interface. And we're going to run it down there. Now listen. See? You didn't hear much. That sucker be slack but smooth, okay? There's the other edge. Now, I know you can't see that with my glove, but they're a little wax. Okay, so good. We're all good with the scraping. So we done scraped that puppy. We did pretty good right there. We scraped it, and we scraped it, and we scraped it. And I don't care. You use plastic scraper if you want, but make sure she's sharp. And don't stop freaking scraping until you... Really, you don't, you, you almost, you know, you cannot almost see any more wax coming off that puppy, okay? I mean, you scrape the dickens out of that puppy. Okay, now I'm going to take this medium fiber pad once again, and I'm going to go over these base edges just a bit. Because, you know, even though you saw me scrape them that one time and all that, there still is a bit of wax on those here and there. You know, just a little film of it. It ain't much, but... You know, when you get right down to it, you want that freaking razor edge to be clean. So we're just going to, again, go down there like that. We might even hit the side just once again, just for a little of the dust factor. Just get Okay, so there we go. We got them edges all cleaned off again. We're going to hit it with the brush, just get the dust. Okay, we're going to start off right here. This is a soft stainless steel brush, okay? Soft stainless steel. It's surrounded by a Scotia horsehair. This is a beast brush. These doggone beast brushes, man. They, they be killer brushes, okay? So anyway, we're going to go for this. We'll start up here. 
with the metal brushes, we're going to brush it from the tip to the tail. Well, hell, I don't know. We could start at the tail and go to the tip, but look, you always got to brush in the direction of travel. So I don't know. The guys that ride switch a lot, you may have heard me say, I don't know what to do. They might brush each way, but no, I'm just kidding. But when you get down to glide, you get kind of technical there, and microscopic and all that. And we want to brush with the steels from the tip to the tail. And uh, the ski will glide a switch really fast still. Okay, but anyway, okay, so there you go. So I guess if you're super in the riding switch, you might brush it a little bit both ways. But anyway, no, seriously, they teach us brush tip tail. Now, the thing with these steel brushes, you don't brush too hard. It's just the very tips of them doggone bristles that do the work. Just them very tips. If you smash it too hard, it gets all mushed up like a doggone smashed up toothbrush. And it ain't going to do the job you want it to do. It's just them teeny little tips that are doing the work. So don't, don't do like this. Don't go like you see some of these videos like slam, 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 slam. You know, you'll mess your brush all up, okay? Just keep a flat. Keep a reasonable amount of pressure. And stroke it. Stroke it. Now you see we're getting some dust here. Now I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this dust on the camera. You know, I can't tell. But anyway, there's dust, okay? That's wax dust right there, see? Okay. Now we're going to keep brushing it a bit with this soft stainless steel surrounded by horsehair, the beast brush. We're going to hold it flat. We're not going to press too hard. We're going to let the brush do the work. We're going to make a few laps here. Now I like to change the direction of my brush. I might brush this way for a little while and then I might twist it this other way and brush it this way a little while because see I'm not pressing down on my brush to make it like you know all bend over any one direction I want it to stay nice and sweet so sometime when I'm brushing I might flip this whole puppy around like this and now I'm gonna brush against the most okay okay so we're looking pretty good on the soft stainless right now I think that's good now if I was gonna be skiing on wet snow with this puppy I might just do one more brushing on this from the soft stainless. I might go straight to a brass, okay? And I run that brass and I brush the crap out of that puppy. And that'll be it. I would not use a horse hair. I would not use a nylon. And I would just finish brushing the wax off with this brass brush. The brass brush got the, the finest little bristles. Get down into every little minute crack, okay? And in wet snow, you don't want to polish the base. You just want to brush it out. Okay? But in this case, I am going to be skiing on dry snow. So we want to polish this even more and clean it off more and polish it. So you, 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 this here right here is a, a bronze bronze brush. A stiff bronze brush. They Beast again. These tend to... The bronze, I don't know, and the copper, they just, I don't know, they certainly seem with the eye to polish a lot more. The bristles not as fine as the brass, now, not as fine as the brass, and, and uh, I could even polish after, run the brass down there once, I guess I could do that, but, so we ran that soft stainless, I'm sorry, the stiff, no, soft stainless, soft stainless, and now we're running a bronze, you can run a copper, whatever. But, you know, it's not really a super fine a bristle, but it does polish a little bit more. And since it's going to be first time out on nice dry, dry snow, I want some polish in there. So, you know. Now, you could, it, it don't, you know, you can take this brass brush right now and go ahead and give a few laps with that too. You know, no big deal. But this brass brush is cutting. So, see, a cutting brush don't polish as much. I mean, it polish a bit for sure. But I mean, it's more of a cutting action here of getting down into that minute little cracks, okay? So now we got that puppy brushed out pretty good. Now we're gonna polish. So we got two polishing choices. We can do one or we can do both or whatever. Now, this uh, nylon brush, and the nylon brush polished like a booger, but the doggone bristles are super fat. 
So they're really only going to polish the peaks and a little teeny bit of the valley. It ain't going to go all the way down to the bottom of them valleys. Now, this, this, this horsehair brush, that's like going to be fine as wine. I mean, super, super fine bristles. They get right down into them little cracks. And this puppy going to not only just clean them little cracks, but it's going to polish that ski all the way down there, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Now, there's a couple different schools of thought on the polishing. And, you know, you can take it whatever way you want. You can remain, stay and go on tip, the tail only, okay? And just go tip the tail only on the polish. Horsehair brush is not steel, it's quite resilient. So even if you bend it over when you're brushing it, it'll come back, but that don't mean it's brushing better. Remember, it's still just the tips that do that work. So you don't need to really overly press hard, but you can press pretty hard with these. Now, this is the other school of thought. When you're doing the final polish brushing, you know, they talk about always brushing from the tip to the tail, from the tip to the tail. Well, with your steels and your brasses and your coppers and your bronze, that, that is really important. But now when you're doing a polishing brush, which might be either this nylon or it might be just this horse hair. Now, some will do this. You can... Go ahead and go both ways. You kind of like you were polishing a shoe. Did you ever polish a shoe when you were a kid? I mean, when I was a kid, I polished shoes because my dad said, Hey, son, polish these shoes because I'm going out. And you better polish them good, he said. And he'd tell me, when you polish them shoes with that shoe brush, you go, it's not so much about how hard you press it. He goes, it's about how many strokes you give it and about how fast you go. So anyway, you can see, that's okay. If you want to polish with the horse hair like this back and forth, that's fine. Now, I usually do that a little bit. I'll do that a little bit back and forth with the horse hair, really clear that structure. But my final passes will be tip to tail, full strokes. So we're going to run that puppy a few times. Here we go. Focusing on a nice pressure that doesn't completely bend all them bristles over, but that grouping and that big fat grouping of them brushes, you hold it down flat, and they're not going to distort too much. Okay, so there you go. That's pretty much it. I mean, you know, we don't need to get too overboard here, but but seriously, folks, there you go. Okay, that is it. This sucker going to run the powder like a demon now. Okay, trust me. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and further polish it. If you feel like it's overly peaky on the structure, you know, and you want to polish the top of that structure off, you can go ahead and take yourself a, a... Well, you can even do it with a doggone fiberline if you want, okay? But uh, you don't do that really under a file. But what I like to do is take a non-abrasive fiber pad... And again, this is an absolute option. You don't necessarily have to do this, but if you want to, you take your white fiber pad. That's totally like non-abrasive polishing type of pad. And you're going to put a file, get a flat file. You're going to back that up. Now you're going to buff it. Okay, you're going to buff that puppy a bit. And you will see the reflection change when you do this buffing. Okay. And, that's, and I can see just that little bit of powder there working up. You probably can't see it in the doggone camera. But that little bit of powder working up off this tail from this, see? And this was a graphite wax. So you can see there's a little black just there because it was a graphite wax. So don't confuse that with it being dirty. But you can go ahead and do this if you want. Now, you don't have to, okay? Run pretty good whether you did that or not. But if you did do that, if you did polish with that pad... Now you got to come back. Well, I like to say you got to come back because a little teeny bit of wax I got off with that pad and went right down in that doggone structure again. So now we got to take this dog out of horse hair and clean that out once again. Here we go. I'm going to clean that out. Clean it out once again. Final clean out because we buffed it with the pad. Now again, like I said, you didn't have to buff it with the pad, but I mean, when you're talking optimum and ultimate, you know, and all that, but you know, hey, you know, you, you'd be okay. But anyway, there we go. Okay, so that's it. So, folks, I don't know how freaking long that took, but that'd be a fat ski, and that's doing it right. Okay, you're gonna do it, do it right. This ski is gonna freaking glide. 
She going to glide, cold, dry stuff. She going to haul ass. Check that out. Okay. Remember when we started? That kind of hard to, you know, I can't see the doggone. I'm looking in this thing and I'm saying, can they see this ski reflect in the camera? See, because reflections, folks, is everything. It's the reflections. The reflections will tell you everything about your tuning, about your brushing, about your scraping. So here's a ski that's going to rip it up, baby. So there it is. All I got is one more of these to do, and then we're good. So, okay, folks. Scraping and brushing. After you're done wax the ski, yeah, take you some time. But it's going to make that ski glide. I mean, right out of the gate. I mean, like, whoa, boom, baby. And leaving anything on the surface of that ski, even just the most minutest layers of wax, is not going to be as good. Okay? So there it is. It's wax in the ski, not on the ski. So get it straight. Scrape. Scrape. Brush. Brush. I mean, brush. And when you think you're done brushing, brush that puppy even some more. Okay. Over and out. Final prep, making the ski ready to get on the damn snow and have some glide and haul some freaking mail. Okay, we're checking out. That's the way we do it.